my opinion, the second greatest power forward of all time, Karl Malone. Karl Malone is, in some people eyes, still the greatest power forward of all time. While I'd not have him at the number one spot, he is the most prolific scoring power forward of all time. He is second all time in scoring with 36,928 points. Had he wanted to, Malone could have surpassed Kareem Abdul Jabbar as the number one scorer. But the death of his grandmother greatly diminished his enthusiasm in breaking that particular record. Drafted in 1985 by the Utah Jazz from Louisiana Tech, Malone had a strong impact his rookie year. He averaged about 15 points and 9 rebounds and made the NBA All-Rookie Team. But in 1987-88 season, the Stockton-Malone duo that was so dominant in the Western Conference, and the NBA for that matter, began to take shape. Although Malone, nicknamed the Mailman, never won a scoring title. For the next decade, he usually was either second or third in the NBA in scoring behind Michael Jordan. He peaked at 31 points per game during the 1989-90 season and had one of the most efficient scoring games of all time that year. A 61-point game and a drubbing of the Milwaukee Bucks by 48 points. He shot 21 of 26 from the field. Imagine how many points Malone may have scored if the game was close. Although the Jazz were perennial 50 game winners, they never could get over the hump. Teams like the Lakers, the Trailblazers, the Rockets, and the Sonics constantly got in their way in the quest for an NBA Finals appearance and a championship. In the 1996-97 season, Malone led his Jazz to 64 wins, a franchise record and won the MVP award that season. Although in a bit of uh, gonzo journalism on my part, in all honesty, I thought Michael Jordan got fucking robbed that season. Malone powered his team to two consecutive NBA final appearances against the Chicago Bulls. However, each time they lost to Chicago in six games. Malone will go on to play for five more seasons with Utah and finish his career with one stint with the Lakers. Malone has been criticized for his sometimes subpar play in the postseason. For instance, in the regular season, Malone was a 51.6% shooter, whereas in the postseason, he dropped off dramatically to just 46.3% shooting. While some of the criticism is fair, I think that it goes too far. For one, Carl Malone, for uh, the most part, especially after 1992, was the only real dynamic a consistent score Utah had. So it was easier for defenses to collapse on him than it was the case for teams like Chicago who had two dynamic scores and uh, other teams. Uh, I think even a bigger part of that was the fact that he was frequently uh, matched against some of the best defenses in the NBA in the postseason, including the Seattle Supersonics in 1992, 93, uh, 96, and 2000. The Houston Rockets with uh, probably top 10 if not top 5 defensive player all time, Hakeem Olajuwon, in 1994, 95, 97, 98, and 2004, though Olajuwon was with the team then. Uh, he went against the Spurs in 1994, 96, 98, 2003. The Chicago Bulls in the finals in 1997 and 1998. The Trailblazers in 1996. 1999-2000, the Denver Nuggets in 1994, uh, the Kim Baton in his prime at the time, as well as a healthy LaFonso Ellis before his devastating knee injury, and the Detroit Pistons in 2004. So those are some of the reasons, in my opinion, why Carmen uh, may have had some subpar uh, games uh, as far as playoffs. Malone was noted for being one of the strongest players in the NBA in his era, at a muscular 6'9", 265 pounds. He was also known for his physical, and some say, well, many say, dirty play at times. In his prime, he could run the floor like a gazelle, and through work, work ethic, uh, raise his free throw accuracy from under 50% his rookie year to about 75% later in his career. He was also noted uh, for his durability, 
are rarely missing games since his last year in the pros and his high level of play at an advanced age. In fact, he is the oldest player in NBA history to score at least 50 points in a playoff game at 36 years old. Uh, about the midpoint of his career, Carmelo began to develop a devastating uh, fallaway jumper uh, that he usually shot from about 15 uh, to sometimes as far as 20 feet out. Uh, in my opinion, from 1995 to about 1998, he had the second best uh, follow-up jumper in the NBA behind Michael Jordan. Uh, he led the NBA in free throw attempts a record seven times and was an all-time leader in free throws made and attempted. Uh, for his career, uh, Carl Malone averaged 25 points per game, 10.1 rebounds a game, and 3.5 assists per game. He was a two-time most valuable player winner. 14 times he was an NBA All-Star, 11 times he was named the All-NBA First Team, twice the All-NBA Second Team, and once the All-NBA Third Team. Three times he was named to, all, to the All-Defensive First Team, and once he was named to All-Defensive Second Team. He was two times the NBA All-Star Game MVP, 1989 and 1993, which is incredible considering that he's stated many times that he never took these games as seriously and did not go out to try to uh, star in these games. Uh, he was on the 1992 uh, Dream Team in Barcelona. He was selected as one of the 50 greatest players of all time in 1996. His number 32 was retired by the Utah Jazz. And many people uh, you know, make claims about him and the guy who I had ranked third, Charles Barkley, never won a championship. When you look at the teams that he had to play against, all these great teams in the Western Conference in the mid, in the early to mid uh, '90s, and you look at the one person who was responsible for so many people not winning a championship, Michael Jordan. Uh, I think it's unfair to uh, criticize Karl Malone for not winning a championship. Uh, but Karl Malone, to me. In my opinion, at least, it's the second greatest power forward of all time. Call the mailman alone.